the Christmas tree carefully, George. Be sure the children not see it until this evening when it is dressed. How much? That's a shilling. Oh, no, keep the change. Stafford International School proudly presents A Doll's House. Uh, it is a classic by um, Henry Gibson, and we are pleased to present this to uh, our audiences over this weekend. Is that my little lark twittering out there? Yes, yes it is. Is that my little squirrel bustling about? Uh, yes. When did my squirrel come home? Uh, just now. Come in here, Trabal, and let me show you what I've bought. The play is about the lead, Nora, who is a woman of that period, and she is uh, finding it very difficult to come to terms with, um, you know, the control laid upon by her husband. Uh, so towards the end of the play, she leaves her husband, and that is seen as a massive, um, a, a massive symbol of empowerment. You're going to earn a big salary and earn lots and lots of money. Yes, after the new year, but then it'll be an entire quarter before the salary is due. Whew, we can borrow until then. All right, same little featherhead. Suppose now that I borrowed fifty pounds today and you spend it all in the Christmas week, and then on New Year's Eve a slate fell on my oh, head and killed me. Oh, don't say such horrid things. Still, suppose that happened. What then? If that were to happen, I don't suppose I should care whether I owed money or not. Yes, but what about those who had lent it? They... Uh, so I play Nora Helmer. She is the main character of this, the story, A Doll's House. Nora is a very young girl. She is very mischievous. She has a very interesting personality because when her husband tells her no to one thing, she always does it. It's like us when our parents tell us, no, you can't do this, but we always go and do it afterwards. It's something like that. Nora has a very interesting background towards her. She is very mischievous and she's cunning, but she puts on this facade that makes, her, makes make everybody believe she's incapable of anything serious and she's very naive, but she truly is not. And I hope that you will see me and Ranka bring out Nora in the best way possible. Has you please, Trevald? Come, come, my little Skylark must not droop her wings. What is this? Is my little squirrel out of temper? Nora, what do you think I've got here? <gasps> Money! There you are. You think I don't know what a lot is wanted for housekeeping at Christmas time? Ten shillings, a pound, two pounds. Oh, thank you, thank you, Trevald, for keeping me going for a long time. Indeed, it must. Yes, yes, it will. Now, come here, let me show you what I have bought. And all so cheap. Look, here's a new suit for Eva and a sword. And a doll and an olive bedset for Amy and Charlotte. They are rather plain, but the two of them shall soon break them to pieces anyways. And oh, here are new dress scents and handkerchiefs for the maids. Oh, and really, ought to have something better? And um, what is in this parcel? <laughs> you mustn't see that until this evening. So the play A Doll's House is set in the 19th century, in 1879. It's written, it was written by Henrik Ibsen in the same year. And the character I'm playing is Tewald Helmer. He's the man of his house. He's uh, Nora Helmer's husband. And it's interesting to play this character because you see he's defined by a few ideals, right? The ideals of honor, responsibility, integrity, but not necessarily in a good way, where he values these ideals more than his loved ones or even himself at certain extents. We see this playing out throughout the play where he's, um, where when this whole thing about the letter and Nora borrowing money without telling him happens, he actually reacts to it very, very badly. And he's in fact ready to uh, go ahead and, you know, scold her and, um, you know, he, all he's concerned with is basically his reputation. You must let Croxer keep his post in the back. My dear, it is his post I've arranged Mrs. Lynch shall have. Yes, and you've been so awfully kind about it, but you could dismiss some other clerk. It's this is simply incredible obstinacy. Because you chose to give this thoughtless promise to this man, I am expected no, to... No, but isn't the reason? You know I'm just so afraid of him. You know what he can post in the paper. And it is just by interceding for him that you make it impossible for me to save him. It is already known at the bank that I mean to dismiss Crockstad. Is it to get about now that the new manager has changed his mind at his wife's bidding? And what if he did? Of course, if only this obstinate little person can have a way. Do you think I'm going to make myself look ridiculous before the whole staff to let everyone think I'm a man to be swayed by, by outside influences? I should very soon feel the consequences of it, I can tell you. Besides, there is one reason I cannot have Crogsad in the bank as long as I am manager. I knew him when we were boys. It was one of those rash friendships that so often proves an incubus in the afterlife. 
I may as well tell you plainly, we were once on very intimate terms with one another, but this tactless fellow is no restraint on himself when other people are present. Dr. Rank is quite a jovial man and he's quite a straightforward man, right? He's on the verge of dying, but however, he still drinks a great deal of champagne every night. And he always visits his friends, Nora and to Towal Helmer, and he always has a smile on his face, which really fascinates me. It's quite the spirit animal which I wish I had, uh, and the characteristics of which I had, right? Uh, well, what really fascinates me over him being quite a jovial man is how straightforward he, he is as a person. Well, he's on the verge of dying, but he still has his one true crush, Nora Helmer. And even though he hasn't been married or hasn't been in an affair, and he's quite an intellectual person, he's quite a straightforward person as well. He confesses his love for Nora towards Act 2, which is quite a surprise and a plot twist of the, sto of the story. I feel that the, uh, the whole role of Rank is quite a pivotal role in the play because it sort of portrays how exactly women should be treated in society, unlike Toval Helmer. He, uh, he treats Nora with a great deal of respect and a great deal of love. And I, I believe that's the way women should be treated in society. And it, uh, his role is quite important uh, in bringing out many themes of the story on how exactly women should be treated for one, and two, on how exactly uh, people should live in quite a jovial manner. I beg your pardon? Am I disturbing you too? Oh no, not at all. Dr. Mank, Mrs. Lin. I have often heard Mrs. Lin's name mentioned here. I think I passed you on the stairs when I arrived, Mrs. Yes, Lin. I go up very slowly. Ah, uh, some slight internal weakness. One must live, Dr. Rank. Yes, the general opinion seems to be that it is necessary. Look here, Dr. Rank, you know you want to live. Certainly. However wretched I may feel, I want to prolong the agony for as long as possible. All my patients are like that. And a bad case, too, is at this very moment with Helmer. Ah. <laughs> Who, whom do you mean? A lawyer of the name Krogstad, a fellow you don't know at all. He suffers a disease model character. Even he began talking of it being highly important that he should live. Uh, what, did he, uh, what did he want to speak to my husband about? I don't know, but it had something to do with the bank. Very well, but now tell me, you extravagant little person, what is it you desire? For my Self? I really can't think of yes, anything. Yes, but you must tell me something reasonable that you would particularly like to have. I can't think of anything unless... Well? If you really want to give me something, you might... Well, out with it. You might give me money to ask. Only as much as you can afford. The reason why uh, Stafford International School chose this play is because we are celebrating 60 years. And um, during this period, we have... Um, we, uh, we, have, we have contributed largely uh, in sciences and even in the art stream. So uh, we thought that what better way to kind of celebrate this great, um, this great um, achievement than to have a play of this nature. Uh, so we are not actually changing uh, the, uh, you know, the nature of the play. We, tr we are trying to keep it as, um, as, as uh, simple as possible and we are trying to make it a period play. So even the, from the costumes to even the set, we are trying to keep it very um, 19th century. So we haven't made any um, major changes like that. And to think, I couldn't go and nurse him. I was expecting little Emmy's worth every day, and I had my poor sick Travall to look after. My dear kind father, I never saw him again, Christine. It was the saddest moment I've known since our marriage. I know how fond you were of him. And then you went off to Italy. Yes, you see, we had the money then, and the doctors insisted on our going, so we set off a month later. And your husband came back quite well, as sound as a bell. Well, playing Nora was very interesting and very challenging. Uh, for instance, this is a 19th century play, so women then and women now act very differently. For instance, I would have never imagined myself to wear something like this. It's, it's very, really hot, it's very hot. 
it was it took some time to get into Nora's shoes and picture myself playing her because her quirks and her way of for instance she has a very quick emotional range she has one of the greatest things I admire about Nora is that she can change her emotions her attitude towards things so fast within a split second and the things that Nora does and how her character develops throughout this entire play was really motivational and it took some time but I'm very glad that I could bring Nora and I hope I present her the best way that I can tonight. Call him back Trava, call him back, do it for my sake, for your own sake, for the children's sake, call him back! You don't know what the netiquette bring upon us! It's too late. Yes, it's too late. My dear Nora, I can forgive the anxiety you are in, although really it is an insult to me. Now, you must go and play and practice your dance. I shall go into the inner office and shut the door, and I won't hear a thing. You can make as much noise as you please. And uh, when Rank comes, tell him where he will find me. Good day, Dr. Rank. I knew your ring. Uh, another defining trait in, uh, about Tavald Helmer is that he's in fact very misogynistic. He believes that men should act a certain way and women should act a certain way, which is another defining trait in this character. And we see this playing out as well in the way how, how he says, look, that is like a woman. And he says, um, basically, he puts down Nora in certain different ways. And we see that playing out as well. Um, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't the easiest thing getting into this character because I do not relate to him that much. I find that I am not very similar to this character at all. So it wasn't the easiest thing getting into this uh, character. But having read through the script a few times, having understood what makes this character tick, I find that it, I did manage to get into this character and with all of the help and support from our directress and my amazing cast, I found that uh, I managed to get into this character where the main difficulty was being mean to an extent because you have to really put down Nora and yeah. Ah? Uh, what is this? Do you know what is in this letter? Yes, yes I know. Let me go, let me out. Where are you going? You shan't save me, Traval. True? Is this true that I read here? Horrible? No, no, it is impossible that it can be true. It is true. I have loved you more than anything else. Oh, in don't let us have any silly excuses. Traval? Miserable creature, what have you done? Let me go, you shan't suffer for my sake. Shut your cares, please. Here, you shall stay. You shall give me an explanation. You understand what you've done? Answer me! You understand what you have done? Yes, I'm beginning to understand thoroughly what I've done. What a horrible awakening. All these eight years, my joy and pride. Hypocrite! Liar! Worse, worse, a criminal. The unutterable ugliness of it all. For shame, for shame. I ought to have expected something of the sort. I ought to have foreseen it. All your father's want of principle, all your father's want of principle has come out in you. No religion, no morality, no sense of duty. How I am punished for having you done what he did. I did it all for your sake. And this, this is how you repay me. Yes, that's just it. Now you have ruined all my happiness. You've destroyed all my future. I am in the power of an unscrupulous man. He can do whatever he likes with me, order me around as he pleases. And I dare not refuse. And I must sink to such miserable depth because of a thoughtless woman! There were quite a lot of challenges I faced while playing the role of Dr. Rank. Well, for starters, I'm a first-time actor, so I had to start all the way from scratch. Miss Michelle put a lot of hard work into getting me to uh, play the role of Dr. Rank. Well, there were quite a lot of challenges I had to face uh, while playing this character. For starters, I had to learn a lot of lines because Dr. Rank is quite a talkative person. Well, uh, addition, in addition to this, um, well, it was quite an experience stepping into new shoes, right? So, firstly, being an old man was quite a tough job. One, being on the verge of dying and uh, being an ordinary teenager playing this role was quite the contrasting character and it had a lot of work to be put into while playing this role. Uh, moreover, I had to take a walking stick and walk around each and every single day of the week we had practice, and it was quite a challenge. Well, I'm sure the rest of the cast also put in a great deal of work into getting into their roles and 
they had to learn a lot of lines and had to go a long way to come through to perfection. Dr. Mack, are you fond of fancy dress balls? Well, yes, if there are any pretty costumes. Tell me, what's the two of us wear to the next one? Little feather brain, you're thinking of the next already. We two, I shall tell you. You shall go dressed as a good fairy. Ah, oh, yes, but tell me what would be an appropriate costume for that. Let your wife go dressed as she's in everyday life. That was really very prettily turned. But uh, what would you go dressed as? Me? Well, it's a surprise. I must leave now. Good night and goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, dear old man. Sleep well, Dr. Mack. Thank you for that wish. Goodbye. <laughs> Clever boy you are, Eva. Oh, let me hold it for a while, and my sweet little baby doll. Stafford International has um, has contributed uh, to the drama scene, and I know of uh, a couple of Staffordians who have gone on to uh, participate in a lot of uh, theatre in Sri Lanka. Um, but I would say this is the first time that we're doing something um, of of this nature in, in such a large scale. So it's very exciting and um, the children are very excited as well and we are glad to uh, perform, perform for Colombo audiences. I would like to also state that most of the kids here are very young. This is, the, this is their first time on stage. So as a director and teacher, it is, um, I'm, I'm actually very honored to have uh, been placed in this position where I can um, kind of make their acting talents come alive. But now it is at an end, Nora. My poor mother needs me no more, for she's gone. And the boys do not need me either. Oh, what a relief you must feel then. I can only feel my life unspeakably empty. No one to live for? Yes, always on the lookout for chances. That is why I could not stand the life of my little backwater any longer. I hope it may be easier for me to find some regular work, office work of some kind. But Christine, that sounds so awfully tiring. And how tired you look now. You better go to some watering place. I have no father to pay for my journey, Nora. Oh, oh, don't be angry with me. It is you that must not be angry with me, dear. The worst a position like mine, it makes one so, so bitter. No one to work for, yet obliged to always be on the lookout for chances. When you told me of the happy turn of your fortunes, you will hardly believe it. As for rehearsals, we had rehearsals throughout the entire month of December. It was a fun way to spend your Christmas holidays with your cast, bond, and like do everything that we did together as an entire and grow as a big family. Uh, we had really late night practices um, from like 6.30 to like 9. And then during the last week, we had like really long pra practices. Some were seven hours, some were like eight. And I really am thankful for Miss Michelle because she considered all our students, especially the ones who are sitting for big examinations this year. We have a lot of classes to attend and Miss was really kind and very thoughtful to uh, allocate practice times for us to attend classes and then come for practice. So it was a very strenuous rehearsal. We thoroughly had to put ourselves into it. Most of the time we were all dead by the time we went to practice and we got scolded for not having energy. Well, what to do? But it was, it was really fun and practicing like this made me realize it is a great effort that you need to put into when you sign up for things like this and honestly you're just gonna have great fun when you join drama. I found you mommy! I found you mommy! I found Excuse you Excuse me Mrs. Helmer. What do you want? Excuse me, the outer door is ajar. I suppose someone forgot to shut it. My husband is out, Mr. Crogstad. I know that. Well, what do you want then? A word with you, of course. W with me? Going to the nurse? Mommy, what about our game? We'll play that later. Mommy, what about the strange man? Won't he hurt you? He won't do mother any harm. You want to speak to me? Yes. But today, it's not the first of the month yet. I know that. It is Christmas Eve and it will depend on yourself. 
as to what sort of a Christmas you will want to spend, Mrs. Helmer. But today it's impossible for We me won't to... talk about that until later on. I presume you can give me a moment or so. Uh, yes, yes, I can. Good, good, good. Moreover, we had to skip or either uh, reschedule most of our extracurricular activities and other educational activities in order to commit for this play, right? However, I'd obviously choose this play over all my extracurricular activities because this was quite a life-changing scenario for me, right? Because it really helped me to step into a new shoes of an old person and meet quite a fascinating family which I would never have met. Like, acting with so many others who were first-timers as well was quite a challenge and all of us had to have each other's backs and help each other all the way from the beginning until the very end. We had practices throughout holidays and it was quite stressing, however it was fun as well. Those who are gone are soon forgotten. Do you really believe that? People form new ties and then... Uh, who will form new ties? Both you and Helmer when I am gone. You are already on the high road to it, I think. Tell me, buddy, that Mrs. Lynn weren't here last night? Oh, ho, ho. you don't mean to say you're jealous of poor Christine? Yes, I am. She will be my successor in this house. When I am done for this woman's will. She's in that room. Speak low. Today again, there you see. She's only come to help me sew my new dress. Bless my soul. How unreasonable you are. Be nice now, Dr. Mag, and tomorrow you shall see how beautifully I shall dance. And you can think I'm doing it all for you. And for Chaval too, of course. When I am seated here. Our practice schedule was pretty intense. It started out like more sparsely in around November, but then it really, really ramped up as we got to December and then January. We had practices almost every single day for the past two or three weeks. And I mean, but it's, it's, it's been really fun. I got to meet these amazing people. I got to work with them. I've made a lot of memories. And like practices were really intense where I was able to uh, increase my capacity as an actor and someone who does drama but I've also met a bunch of amazing people so it's, it's been a really fun experience all in all and even though I've had to reschedule other commitments and uh, make time for this production I feel that it has been well worth it. It's because I make believe to myself that we are secretly in love that you are my secretly promised bride that no one suspects that there is anything between us Yes, you know your thoughts are with me all the time. And when we are leaving and I'm putting the shawl over your beautiful young shoulders, over your lovely neck, then I imagine that you are my young bride, that, we have, that I'm bringing you into our home for the first time, to be alone with you for the first time, quite alone with my shy little darling. All the seductive figures of the dance have set my blood on fire. I could endure it no longer. That is why oh, no, I... No, 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 I won't. What, you're choking, Nora? Am I not your husband? Do you hear that? This production would not have been possible if it weren't for the very supportive uh, management that we have. Um, uh, I would like to um, thank our academic director, Mr. Suin Vethamuni, who gladly um, and very willingly agreed to uh, a production of this nature. It is, of course, it is, it is not a very cheap production. It's quite costly. We had to build this stage from scratch, but um, it has been an exciting one and I'm so thankful for the management for all the support.